Hello everybody, welcome to the World of Brick Films podcast, I am your host, William of AW Studios. Joining me as always is my good friend and co-host, Sean Weirs of City Panther. Hello again, it's good to be talking again. <laughs> and our special guest today is um, the winner of Manifest, Joshua Nelson. Hello. Hello. Pl- Plastic Puppet Theatre was um, just so uh, you know just so good um congratulations on that <laughs> mm-hmm. thank you and uh i mean you're both judges so thank you for placing it that high <laughs> yeah, actually i mean i don't know i don't know if, if we usually reveal things like this but it was a unanimous decision you know as soon as all the ballots came in it was one 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 all across the board <laughs> we watched it as a group and we really enjoyed it we were um i think it made for a great group watch because we were reacting to like the slow digging of the popcorn. It was like, come on, get it. <laughs> yeah, I almost fun. wanted to re-record that because I, it wasn't intentional to just like mess up the first few <laughs> times, but I don't know. I just decided to keep it in there. Well, we thought that him messing it up so often was hilarious. Like, I think I think we thought that he was going to go keep go back and just keep doing it for for more time, and we we would have still been <laughs> laughing at it. <laughs> So that so that worked out, even if it wasn't entirely intentional. Yeah, I'm actually really glad that um, you chose to keep it in. Um, one of the things that I did uh, that I found generally really impressive about the whole film was just like how, you know, because you know it's like 24 minutes long, but like the um, I, I I'd feel like it couldn't have been any shorter than it was. Like it it I think I feel like a huge part of what makes it so good is just like how long it actually is. You know. Yeah, I mean, I've made longer films in the past, but with this one, I, again, it wasn't intentional how long it would be. I didn't expect it to go that long, but I suppose it's because, you know, it's all video and it's easier to make a longer film when you're not worried about the frame rate or like taking a whole bunch of pictures it, with recording video. It just goes by so much quicker. Mm hmm. But of course, I feel like mentioning, uh, you know, it kind of it comes up usually when we're talking about judging contests. But like for a long time now, we've always preferred the method of considering the overall film as the, the, the highest factor. You know, th- there was a time when stuff was broken down, judged by categories. And we always thought that ended up in results we weren't happy with. And I feel like mentioning like with this contest, you know, the judges weren't going into it thinking, oh, you know, we, we should pick a winner that's made like this or made like that or not made like this or whatever. It was just, you know, we just thought that this overall was was the best film. And we weren't we weren't like, oh, it's going to be so funny to, to place a live action film as the winner. You know, there was none of that. Like <laughs> each film was considered on its own terms. And yeah, I just think this was really successful uh, as, a, as a complete film. If you're into uh, this sort of thing... It, Maybe some people, I don't know, it might depend on on if you kind of get, like, how to watch something like this. Like, I don't know, did you, do you have any sort of direct influences in mind in making this film? Uh, I mean, maybe um, subconsciously, but I can't think of anything that I was directly inspired from, except maybe just other Rick films that I've seen that were made with video instead of stop motion Mm, yeah yeah of course i thought it was interesting how it it reminded me of the brick films made in the 90s yeah Uh, but one thing that we were we were bringing up when we were watching it was it reminded us of a razor head but i i don't know have you ever seen that no i haven't i guess i don't know if it's more surprising that you haven't because there's a lot of humor in a razor head that's like you know waiting for something to happen and and you can just feel how deliberate it is, and like just this is just this you know weird sound design going the whole time that just amp- that amplifies the awkwardness, and it's 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 not for everyone, but it's really funny, <laughs> and yeah, a similar sort of blend of like you know uncomfortable uh, film and and all, but also being funny, and you know doing the two things at once kind of. Actually, another another question that's probably no real answer to. It probably just just sort of comes out this way without thinking about it. But do you have any sort of idea as to why you make a lot of films that are like 20 minutes, 30 minutes long? Because it's very unusual in brick filming. You know, um, it kind of just depends on the film. Like, again, sometimes it's not intentional, like this time around. But sometimes I do, like, 
plan things out, want to make a longer film. Mostly just has to do with the story, I guess, because the story in some of my films wouldn't work otherwise if it was any shorter. Yeah. And uh, I often feel like it's a very hard sell in Rick filming. Like, and, and of course, I'm guilty of doing this too. But like, it feels like if you tell somebody that they should check out a Rick film that's like 20 minutes plus, they're like, oh, God, you know, maybe I'll watch it eventually. <laughs> but, um, you know, I understand that. But yeah. to me personally, though, I, I prefer longer films, especially Rick films. Like, it gives me more time to invest in that world, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I feel like when they work, it's great. The two Zombie Man films are, are really, really worth everyone's time, I think. Yeah, that. <laughs> and I, I think it, it's a shame that they don't have uh, more views. I, I, the, the the recent one kind of, I, I don't know, it flew under the radar for me, but then uh, eventually I saw people talking about it on Discord and basically saying, you know, hey, people should actually check this out, you know, give it some time. It's worth it, and I agree. Well, I suppose I'm not very good at advertising my films <laughs> but uh, i'm trying to get better at that but mm -hmm. and also the second one i actually intended both of them to be one film when entering uh the summer contest from last year the fright and fear one but of course that didn't work out like there was no way mm -hmm. so i'd split into so I still wanted to finish the second one, but, you know, since it wasn't for a contest, I guess it blew under the radar for some people. Yeah. Well, if anyone listening to this hasn't seen Zombie Man Legacy from two months ago, yeah, give give it some time. <laughs> it, it reminded me of The Gauntlet, actually. Uh, if you've seen The Gauntlet, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, classic brick film. I think I, I might have. That sounds familiar. But if, if you watch the history video, the most recent history video I made, The Gauntlet has a, a large feature in that, but... Yeah, yeah, you know what, it, it's coming back now. Mm -hmm. But I guess it probably wasn't a direct influence. No, I, I, I don't know. For me, like, I mean, once in a while I might be uh, inspired by some things specifically more than others, but for the most part, like, you know, if it's similar to some things that it's not really intentional mm -hmm. or maybe it is subconsciously but i never really think about other films and then go oh i'm gonna do something like that but a little different yeah well, it, it's it's easy e easy for me to forget that other people haven't watched the gauntlet like a hundred times over the last however many years <laughs> <laughs> but no I, I think that is um something that I, I do generally find really impressive with your work is uh you know the the longer brick films that you've done i feel like um you know, it, it's it's you know, obviously it's no easy feat to to make anything that's that's um you know a lot longer like that. But also, I think considering the pace and like the amount that you can actually do with that time, I feel like you um you really take like full advantage of that, which I find um really interesting because it's like it's something you take for granted. But like um a lot of brick films don't really have the sort of that sort of chance to really kind of develop characters and stuff in that way. Um, and I, I did I did find that a lot with um. Mr. Classified and uh, Chloe is Calling, which are like uh, from a couple of years ago now. But I, I find it generally interesting seeing like how you kind of pace them and, and stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. I definitely feel like I might have slowed down a few times or rushed a few other times. But for the most part, I want to keep the pacing as consistent as I possibly can without like boring anyone or, <laughs> or like, like not messing up like the certain tone of certain things because some parts are like intentionally slow or intentionally quick yeah. depending on what it is well certainly in plastic puppet theater it, it all came across as intentional to me the you know the slowness worked i thought yeah but... and that's hard to pull off i think but yeah it is true with some of those older films with more dialogue like you have a lot more time to develop characters which is kind of unusual in brick filming Certainly, with Zombie Man Legacy, um, I was. It kind of it reminded me a lot of older brick films. Maybe the, maybe it's the camera quality is part of it, but it kind of felt like you know it's it's less concerned with being like absolutely, you know, pixel perfect, uh, technical qualities, and it's more like interesting ideas and something interesting keeps on happening, 
one after another. And uh, I guess it, it's almost something I, I'd like to kind of return to because I, I, I find myself, you know, getting finicky with individual frames. And it's like, even though I end up liking that, I liking the results, I, I kind of wish I didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, part of that is a lack of better equipment or knowledge to make things look or sound better. But um, another thing is that at some point you just got to stop caring about mm -hmm. technical stuff as much as like maybe i just see things differently but I, i'm more into the story side of rick films yeah. i mean i completely agree like, the technical side. I, I feel like i have to try and stop myself and i have to say like you know it's not it's not worth it for every shot you know sometimes you, you actually have to get a film done <laughs> And, and like, I feel like in watching other people's films, I, I guess I'm just harder on my own stuff, you know, like, I watch other people's films and I'm like, wow, this, this is a great film. <laughs> Even if it doesn't have, like, super smooth animation or whatever. But then if, then I watch my own stuff, I'm like, oh, God, what one frame is wrong. It's ruined. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like it really comes across in your in your films that... You know, it, it is about the story, and I think just doing stuff that's really interesting. I think visually, um, I, something that I, I found um, with your with your films a lot is like um, the there's like I think you do a lot with color and um, mm -hmm. a lot of really interesting stuff with like set design and, and things like that. Um, and um, yeah, I like that effort being put into that, rather than sort of worrying too much about like I know the more technical stuff. I think. Yeah, really shine I mean, in the, you know, like sort of creativity. Yeah, yeah, it's one thing to like be worried about everything looking quality clear and sounding perfect, but like if it's the techniques themselves, like the animation or like something cool that you can do, it's something that will capture the audience's attention. It more so enhances the story itself. Yeah, and I guess sort of deliberate uses of color and interesting character designs are probably things that people ought to think about more often in brick filming. Yeah, I, I like how you, um, you mentioned color because with this latest film, like, I don't know if you noticed, but most of it is like the classic Lego colors. Mm -hmm. And I tried, like, I had like blue grass and a blue tree because mm -hmm. I didn't want to use any green. Oh, like, yeah. Pieces. I didn't think about that, that you weren't using green. I just thought that the the blue tree looked cool. It's just a stylized tree. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's actually really cool. I just, yeah, I just noticed that now. <laughs> and then, of course, you've got, like, um, using black for the uh, the actual kind of wood of the tree as well. That kind of thing as well. Yeah. I wanted I lots suppose... of the, those classic colors to be present throughout the film. You must have a, a lot of Lego, I guess. <laughs> the, um... The brawl entry had some really impressive sets. Yeah, most of those sets were built by my brother, so I can't take all the credit for that. But <laughs> I, I did build the interior of the bathroom so. <laughs> <laughs> and a few of the buildings. We definitely liked the brawl entry as well. Yeah, I think I mentioned this in, in the in the brawl special, but I really like um, stories that are kind of, you know, you see the same kind of stories through different perspectives, different characters. And you know it kind of uh, it how, how that kind of can add to get add up together and stuff. And I mentioned as well like how I liked you know there were certain jokes and stuff that they kind of work when you when you have like you see the whole picture you know. Yeah, one part of that is it doesn't really matter which one you watch first, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah, and I, I feel like you kind of get completely different experiences if you kind of which 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 other order you you choose to watch it. But um, something that I really liked as well was um, is it is it true that you um, in the library scene, um, you had like two cameras at once. Like, it was the same, you know, like your bro your, your brother's entry and yours, you know, you had like the same actions, but from different cameras. Yeah, that wasn't just the library scene. That was most of the film. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. We had um, both the characters in the same shot, whether they were both seen in the same shot or not. Like we set it up and we had the cameras from two different angles so we could animate at the same time yeah that is interesting because yeah there, there was you know some talk of like oh should this be judged as one film or two 
and it was decided to judge it as one film. And yeah, I think that that, that was brought up as like, oh, it, it it looks like, yeah, some of the animation is the same from different camera angles. So it's, <laughs> yeah, you know, you, you can't uncouple them. Yeah. You definitely kind of felt like there was no way that you could kind of like, you know, put one like above the other or anything. I feel like it, it, it really works so well as like, you know, one. Well, the whole time we were making it, we were thinking like, it doesn't feel like we're working on two separate films. It feels like we're making the same film, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I couldn't have imagined one being placed higher than the other. It just would have seemed silly. Yeah, uh, and I guess it works out since it's my brothers and I. So, yeah. you know, if it were anyone else, any other two people, unless they live together, or, you know, I can't imagine them working on the same film or like two separate films like this. Yeah, especially not for the entire week. I mean, unless you stayed at someone's house, I guess. Yeah. yeah I, I kind of like the idea of like, you know, doing that for a tech joining together with some other Rick Fulmer and like, you know, somebody would have to stay overnight, of course. Or just, well, tch, I guess if it was tacky, you probably wouldn't even be going to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's what, wasn't it Mighty Wanderer and... Um... Sloth Paladin, yeah. So yeah, they did that in 2019. And also Brickhead and Forlorn Creature. More yeah. than once, I think. But actually, yeah, I watched the Zombie Man behind the scenes video and I, I really liked the technique of a... Uh, drawing the legs of the like gem things walking around drawing them on the clear bricks and then masking out the the clear brick oh that was really clever might have to steal that in future <laughs> it, was, it was so time consuming though <laughs> and stressful but it's definitely worth it mm -hmm. for the most part i don't know i had to be smart with it and use as less of it as possible while yeah. also making the parts that i did use that technique for shine so mm -hmm. but I, I certainly like the look of it the drawdown parts being in camera rather than just being like ms paint scribbles or anything <laughs> yeah yeah i didn't want to make it look like the legs were like in front of the screen instead mm -hmm. of actually in you know yeah yeah i know and i know how it feels when when you can clearly detect where one layer ends and another begins but yeah, of course, there are there's a couple of techniques you can use to avoid that, especially if you uh, like you know if if you're drawing something that's black, you want to try and make it look like how something that's colored black does in the frame that you've actually shot because you know when you shoot something with a camera, it it black doesn't come out as pure black like the contrast is different, or you know there's some color reflecting on it that makes it look a little bit different, and then if you can match that, it it goes a long way to selling a digital effect. But, of course, you don't have to think about that if you just do it for real. <laughs> I used a similar technique in Half-Heartedly. I actually did that first. And in one of the scenes, the girl with the horns, I drew on green bricks to, like, green screen. And uh, I realized that I drew with red marker on green bricks, so it came out looking black. <laughs> so <laughs> I learned my lesson there. That was another film that I really liked, especially, you know, all the... The face animation and other drawn elements. It really seemed like, yeah, un unlike anything else I'd seen, really. Yeah, and that was the first time I also practiced with, like, lip syncing with the mounds. And I had to do it while I was animating, because each frame I'd draw a different face on the minifigure head. And so, like, let's say in the ears that are drawn on, what's the method here, you know, because it... it doesn't look like you could be doing the same uh, clear break method for some of these drawn elements. Well, I used the clear one by six by five panel pieces. So is the drawn, the drawn parts are in front of the figures in the frame or behind them? It would be in front of the figure and then I'd mask out everything but what I drew on it. Okay. And I also did that for when the figures transitioned into a drawing. Uh, that's really good to know because, yeah, I wasn't sure how some of this was done. I guess I probably assumed that that it was more digital than I thought. No, uh, the only thing digital were well, I mean, obviously the the captions, but like all the drawn on stuff, um, it was all in camera, masked out. It's really cool. It's a another one that if anybody listening to this hasn't seen it, you should go check it out half heartedly. And of course, I appreciate the music choice as well. Yeah, so some people were saying they liked the video but they didn't like the song but <laughs> <laughs> i'm like well okay I, I can't agree with that anything from yeah. pinkerton pinkerton b-sides you know 
I, I, I'm down with that. <laughs> <laughs> but I like a lot of the original music you do as well. It's uh, a lot of the, you know, sort of stuff based in loops and layers. I like that sort of style. Yeah. So what is What do you use to make the music? <laughs> I mean, I, uh, I'm not really a musician sort of, <laughs> like, I, I just use, like, various music making apps on my phone like it's nothing special but well i mean that's impressive that's cool to know change it up as much as possible and uh i also add like effects to it to make it sound different and stand out but yeah that, that's pretty much it <laughs> but i mean i think it, it i think it comes out well and it, it works for you know uh, adding to the style yeah it's actually something that i really liked um as well about um, plastic puppet theater was the um, the sound design as well. Like there was uh, there's quite a few kind of like uh, kind of eerie kind of like uh, kind of noises and stuff in the in the background and stuff, uh, like ambient stuff, which um, really adds to the aesthetic as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I had the um, static noise, very quiet static noise throughout the film. Probably wouldn't notice unless you turn the volume up, but uh... For the most part, besides that, I kind of wanted to keep it quiet, but like an eerie quiet yeah. with the occasional sound effect where I needed there to be sound. Yes, I, I do think that goes a long way to selling the uh, intentional awkwardness. Uh, I, I like to yeah keep something in the sound mix at all times, even if it's just room tone that nobody can actually hear. <laughs> but it's, hmm. it does seem to work for some reason. There are moments where I could have added like another song or two, but I, I didn't want that for most of the film. Hmm. I thought it would be better to have it mostly silent, but like an awkward, eerie type of silent. Yeah, but of course that was, I already, basically I already said this, but that was another thing that was making me think of Eraserhead, which is very similar in its use of sound. I suppose a question we always like to ask is, uh, what are some of the earliest brick films that inspired you or that you remember watching? Well, I think like one of the very first Brick films I've seen was a uh, Harry Potter one. I don't remember what it was called, but it had like Harry and Ron calling Hermione Hermione. <laughs> <laughs> Putting yeah. beard on everyone. That's a, a, a stone cold classic right there. <laughs> that was one of the very first uh, Brick films that I saw. But yeah. I think what really got me into, um, well, I mean... I, I didn't start brick filming until like 2014, 2015. But what really got me interested and made me want to eventually make brick films was back in 2009, Agonomation's uh, Space Police brick films. I was, uh, I really liked those and I saw the behind the scenes of that and it, it got me thinking like, whoa, I want to do that, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I really that kind of reminds me of how I got into brick filming as well like by seeing it behind the scenes and kind of thinking like oh like I, I could actually do that and also in watching the zombie man behind the scenes you mentioned how you like first you started with comics and I, I was the same I, I before I was doing brick films I was doing comics and I guess it's kind of it's probably no surprise that your your brick films are very heavily story based no surprise that you would have started out with uh, comics yeah and I mentioned this in the behind the scenes video, but I never even like imagined of thought of making the zombie man into a film, let alone a brick film <laughs> back when I made it up. So like, that's why, you know, when you're making a brick film and you're starting off uh, wanting to make a brick film, you, you look at what you can do with all the Lego around you and, you know what different creations you can make but with this it's kind of like looking at what is already there and then thinking how do i make that in lego you know yeah mm. yeah i mean that's that's definitely something that i i i, I sort of uh, do it all the time is like i think i think we've probably we can all kind of relate to that point uh where we were kind of starting out um well i think a lot of us anyway like not having a whole lot of lego and kind of having to kind of either play around with different kind of materials or just do what we can with the kind of small amount of Lego that we have. And even even now, like even over the years when I've kind of like 
uh, I've built up my collection a little bit more. I still um, try as much as I can just to kind of work with the limitations of just what I have, you know, already. And I think you, you can end up doing a lot of, like, creative stuff that you otherwise, like, wouldn't have thought of doing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially, yeah, like what you were saying with the colours. Yeah, it's something that you can, you can use rather than just having a gigantic, you know, exquisitely constructed set. If you just have it, yeah, colours constructed in an interesting way, it can make your brick film visually appealing. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you don't even have to put that much detail into a set. You mm-hmm. just have to have certain things stand out that make it unique and yeah. stylized in a way. Absolutely, yeah. I agree. I think, well, that's something that I was I was just looking back then to um, uh, Well, your um, 20, uh, 2019 third entry. And uh, I remember really liking that. And I, I like things like, you know, having a kind of brick-built sun, you know, stuff like that, where, uh, and, you know, the whole sky is kind of, you you know used with bricks to sort of show a lot with just a very small amount of bricks you know yeah i always kind of like that kind of thing in brick films mm-hmm. yeah and for a fact you don't have time to like i mean unless you made it beforehand you don't have time to make huge sets or get all crazy with the set building or even animation in some parts yeah that's true and also i kind of feel like if you do make a huge set beforehand for tech people don't put much stock in it you know they just they just look take one look at it and think oh that was just made beforehand who cares <laughs> <laughs> so you know if you can make something visually good that's obviously not something massive that was constructed beforehand people might actually value that higher in tech they might think oh you know this was done in the 24 hours and, and it looks good yeah i never thought about it that way before i always assumed that like people would just i don't know if you can even tell like with certain things like what's built during or before well that is true because actually the sets in overdue were they built during the week yeah they were all built during the week that's incredible (laughs) (laughs) i absolutely would have assumed that the library outside and inside was a just something you already had i watched my brothers and and myself because i built some of them but it was mostly my brothers built most of those within the week and i, I was impressed so mm-hmm. yeah that is good. that is pretty that's pretty amazing because i mean like not only uh i mean yeah like cause it's not just as well like the just the library say like you've got like the the interior and the exterior but then you've also got like you know quite an extensive like city scene and um, the house and uh, you know there's 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 multiple sets in that which um i think I, I do think that in general i think especially with like brawl like if you can if you have like multiple sets like it, it does it just makes it feel a lot more impressive you know mm-hmm. um probably actually more impressive than just having like one big set no i was super impressed um, by how the whole film keeps moving from set to set to set to set very rare to see. Not, not even just for brawl but it's pretty rare for any brick film definitely yeah yeah, for sure. I assume you must have sorted Lego <laughs> and a, a good supply of it. Yeah, I I mean, I try. My my brothers definitely have uh, most of their Lego sorted. I probably should resort mine because I have a lot of it sorted, but a lot of it's also unsorted. <laughs> yeah. I did take apart a few things for pieces now and again and just uh, keep track of that, but I don't know if I ever actually will, because I've probably I've been saying this for about half my life now. But you know, one of these years I'll sort my Lego. <laughs> It'll make my <laughs> life so much better. <laughs> oh yeah, I couldn't I couldn't imagine like going into like a a sack or a brawl uh, and not having some kind of organization that would just drive me crazy. Um... <laughs> yes, yeah, it would. It definitely helps, <laughs> especially if you just have like your basic bricks. Uh, because I have my basic bricks sorted by color, so that definitely helps. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I have yeah, I, I have say. a couple of big big walls of yeah basic bricks in different colors, but other than that, yeah. If I want to find a single element, it's like, oh no, I have to go and look for this now. I mean, what I do is I have like um, old ice cream tubs, and I just I just keep them as like. And what I do is I'll have like um, one bot one you know one tub will be red bricks, and then another tub will be yellow bricks, and that kind of thing. What I have is like I use um, the resealable plastic bags, and I will separate like the, the two by fours in in one bag, 
and then like uh you know two by threes and that kind of stuff and they'll just like put all of them into the tub <laughs> yeah i don't even have it that organized not gonna lie <laughs> <laughs> i'm kind of surprised but i guess yeah as you say i guess your brothers have been more sorted yeah they used to have each of their lego separate but now they just like combine them together so they both own like all their lego so <laughs> <laughs> and of course, they, yeah, they made a really good winning brawl film, uh, Scrap, which actually both both Scrap and Plastic Puppet Theater had moments in them where I was reminded of Robota, which is a film I'm always bringing up. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> once again, I I couldn't even I wouldn't even be, I wouldn't even know if if you've seen Robota or if that was even a direct influence. But I guess I might as well ask. Well, I've seen it. Um, I don't think my brother saw it until after they made scrap because someone told them that as well but um i'd have to ask them because i don't think they were really influenced by anything specific either mm -hmm. that's yeah i mean i just i take any opportunity i can get to plug robota <laughs> <laughs> one of these days we've got to track down the creator <laughs> i do think though in a, in a you know in a big way um the kind of you're saying like how a lot of your ideas and stuff kind of a kind of subconscious and i guess in a way i kind of i can kind of see that in the kind of style like because a lot of your films are kind of have a kind of like dream like aesthetic to them i mean i definitely felt that way with um plastic puppet theater that it kind of had this sort of yeah if it ha felt very kind of surreal and dreamlike um and also you did another film didn't you in um a couple years ago uh, lucid which again was kind of all about like dreams yeah that film is, is about subconsciousness, <laughs> I guess you could say. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Um, and I like when people make brick films that are, uh, you know, a bit more abstract. Um, but at the same time, not trying too hard, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I, I don't know. I find it a challenge for me to, like, just do whatever, like... Like, it, it doesn't matter, just, like, throw things at the wall. And yeah. for me, like, as abstract as it can be, I still want there to be some sort of purpose or some sort of story to mm -hmm. grab onto to keep the film grounded while also not, like, too grounded because you still want it to be abstract and weird and <laughs> yeah. not knowing what's going on for most of it. Well, I, I feel like, yeah... It is very natural, especially Plastic Puppet Theater felt natural to me. And like, yeah, I've already mentioned Eraserhead multiple times, but like when I was watching it, I was thinking to myself, I wouldn't be surprised if this wasn't influenced by Eraserhead because I had this thought in my mind, like if, if a brick film were said to themselves, like I'm going to make a brick film that is going to remind people of Eraserhead, it would probably turn out really cringy. <laughs> <laughs> So I was kind of thinking, you know, this, this it's probably this is probably just all natural. It's probably not, you know, trying to evoke anything. It's just, yeah, just made it and just came out this way because I wasn't cringing at it. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird how you keep mentioning Eraserhead because, yeah, I've never seen it. But um, someone else also commented that another one of my films reminded them of it, mm -hmm. of Eraserhead. It was Cry. There's a couple of things that are like seem very reminiscent like the the dancing girl on the stage uh it's very it's it's like something very specific in a razor head i think that a lot of it may be just like what you were kind of intending in terms of the story and and like the style of it that again the sort of subconsciousness of it all maybe it just kind of ha so happened that like a razor head had similar attentions in terms of what they're trying to do <laughs> Um, you know, with that kind of the subconsciousness and, and if that makes sense, you know, just kind of throwing those ideas out. And obviously it's the dreamlike atmosphere in general. I mean, I've had lots of instances where I come up with an idea and then find out later that someone else kind of did it, but not yeah. in the same exact way. So I'm like, oh, well, that kind of cheapens my idea. But at the same time, you know, mine is you know different and executed oh, yeah. differently no i mean obviously the, the film like is completely different as a you know as a, a full film of course but yeah i think it, it probably has happened to all of us where you, you see something much later and you're like well that's really weird that's exact that's you know 
very similar to something I did once, but I, I never saw this. <laughs> I know for me, it, it was a brick film I made in 2008 called World of Warcraft that is very similar to the South Park episode about World of Warcraft. It has basically the exact same ending, but uh, I hadn't seen that. It's wild how that happens. I mean, you can't really avoid that, but the best way to just go through with whatever you're doing is to think, well, you know, maybe there is something out there that's very similar, but, you know, you can't let that stop you. That's because true. Because it's still, it's still going to be different. It's still going to be your vision and not whatever anyone else makes, so... You but kind of, of just have to roll with it. Speaking of South Park, they did do an episode where everything, the whole episode is about how every idea has already been done by the Simpsons. <laughs> so it's like everything everything anyone comes up with, it's like, oh, well, the Simpsons already did it. It's like, well, who cares that the Simpsons already did it? Like, we're, you know, it's, it's not meant to be a a direct clone and we came up with the idea ourselves, but it's, yeah. It's, it's just something, yeah. It's going to happen, but nobody's like saying, oh, this is a, you know, malicious ripoff or anything. You can you can always tell when it's um its own thing, like. Oh yeah, I mean, so, so amazing stuff can can be made that can just be a series of different influences, but you know, just sort mm-hmm. of done in a in some in the somebody else's vision, you know. Like I mean, there are there are you know a, a, a few instances where you know a couple of my films where like they were directly inspired by things I had kind of previously seen. Um, mm-hmm. As long as you're not like delib- you know, like very actively just kind of stealing an idea, you're, you're putting your own spin on it. You and know? I might I be think... jumping the gun by mentioning this, but and this is, of course, this is kind of a different, a different type of thing because I imagine that the influences were uh, more consciously, you know, he would have known, but Stuck, the second place winner of Manifest, um, like when when Stuck came on in the playlist, I was thinking to myself, what the heck? This is just like. Forlorn Creatures brick film that's literally called Stuck in all caps. And also it has like Don Hertzfeld influence, I guess. But as it went along, it was like, oh, wow, you know, he's really turned this into its own thing. Like, it doesn't just come across like, you know, a ripoff. It's like, oh, I, I can see the influence and he's completely taken it in a new direction and built on it. And, and you know, Forlorn Creature said the same. Forlorn Creature was really happy to see, you know, somebody inspired by something he had done and like, you know, do something different with it. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking of that film as well. I'm like, have I seen this before? But I couldn't have. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then I went off the rails and I'm like, yeah, no, I have not seen this before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's actually a really perfect example of a film that really kind of, uh, you know, takes takes a lot of like, you know, different influences, but just does something really creative with that. Uh, again, I don't, I don't want to kind of tell you too much about it before we formally kind of go into the top, the top 10. But yeah, no, I definitely found that with that. Um, but I guess before we kind of move on to the top 10, um, I guess it just, there are like a couple of recent films that we, I guess, non-manifest films that you kind of want to talk about, isn't there? Well, I mean, if you're talking about Sanjira's film, <laughs> I mean, that, that's about as manifest as they come. <laughs> yeah. Good thing I watched that like yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm extremely impressed by Sanjira's film and there's so many shots in that where I can't even wrap my head around how they were created. I mean, it's like, I know that there's a combination of, of stop motion and digital stuff going on throughout the film, but it's just, it's combined together so well. There's certain shots where I'm like, like, is this a stop motion element in a digital environment or is it all digital or all real with a filter on it? And it's like, man, an amazing film. He'd been working on this like for about a year, hadn't he? It was originally Mm -hmm. intended for, um, September Fest. The S- September Fest, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, well, at least it came out in September, so I guess, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if he wasn't, like, the host and judge of Manifest, um, and if this was made for Manifest, it would have blown all the other entries away. Mm-hmm. I mean, the other entries were great, but... <laughs> I mean, what else do you expect out of Sanjira, honestly? Yeah. <laughs> The same with the fact that when he made Where Is My Dog Pico, it was intended for Brawl, but it was late. But, you know, if that had been a successful Brawl entry, that the competition would have been, uh, yeah, a lot stiffer, that, that, that Brawl. Yeah, for sure. Because there's just, like, so much within it. Like, there's so many different, you know, yeah, it's just, like, it's quite like hard to, like, ten times. unpack, you know. Yeah. 
Like I, the, I, I really, I feel like there's so many different elements and you know different kind of. That you've got like sort of sort of digital effects and and like two D animation and uh, all this stuff that's kind of like added, you know, all sort of combined together. But it all kind of it all feels like seamless. It yeah. all kind of just works so well together. <laughs> and it's something that you know people mightn't have even noticed, but there's a couple of smear frames in the film. I think we we probably mentioned this. I think there were similar things in the the brawl entry we would have talked about recently, but le- like. There's there's some custom heads from a uh, Citizen Brick, I think, where it's like two heads side by side, you know, like sort of stuck together that that just fit onto a single neck peg, you know, and they're just they're only there for like one frame, even but he still has the the face drawn on it with marker. So like you know, this film is worth studying, basically. Yeah, I feel like it's kind of one of those one of those films where they know that you're gonna kind of be. Uh, it's one of the, you know, you're going to be kind of like looking frame by frame and, and you know, really studying it. <laughs> yeah, but it, it works really well. It's always good. I feel like it's good when you don't even register what the the different pieces are. Like that's when it's a successful smear frame in brick filming. You know, <laughs> like oftentimes when you're watching brick film, you're kind of hyper aware of what each element is. Uh, so, you know, if you see one pop up for one frame, you're like, well, I see that, you know, that claw piece <laughs> or whatever. And that can be kind of a, a look of its own yeah. as well. Like, I think both of them work uh, well in, in terms of, well, depends on what you're trying to go for. But mm. um, yeah, I think for the, for like the style that Sanjiro is going for, I feel like his, all these elements kind of bending into into each other. I think it, it's uh, a really uh, just sort of perfect effect, I think, for it. I also have, like how he uses like the clay for different frames where the piece would become clay and He'd like mix that with the Lego and yeah. In in his latest uh, film, the doctor with the <laughs> huge cone shaped head. Yeah, the doctor's head is just crazy. <laughs> Different, but I love it. It's kind of hard to tell, like where it it, it stops being Lego and starts being mm-hmm. like clay. Like it's it's just so seamless, mm-hmm. and I kind of love that kind of. Almost not being able to tell yeah, what it well. is, because <laughs> I know there is a, a citizen brick um, head that is um, very tall. Yeah. Um, <laughs> which kind of I I feel like it's kind of inspired by, um, and I think that he has actually used. Um, yeah, the tall head was in the that, brawl entry before. Yeah. So I feel like it kind of was at least inspired by that, and I think it was literally just like a normal head that he kind of added clay to. I, for the life of me, could not tell what that triangular pyramid-shaped head is. <laughs> what did he use for that? Like, is that a piece? or? Yeah, I don't know what either of those guys' heads are made of. Uh, it is actually quite hard to tell. <laughs> that's a good thing, though. It's good that it's hard to tell. I don't want to know how it's done. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I often feel like I can get more invested when I can't comprehend how everything was accomplished. <laughs> and I don't think that is, like an everyday thing with brick films mm-hmm. <laughs> you know yeah, another thing that's just kind of uh, really so incredibly well done was when all the all the legs kind of separate and they're running ra- running around on the hill and everything mm-hmm. um, and I'm pretty sure that was all done um, with CG I think so yeah the, the legs but again shots. like it just it just works so well like he was it looks so real yeah. <laughs> I feel like also going back to Manifest um, something about this film like also had like a very funny but also sometimes disturbing vibe to it especially when the scene where it shows Lon Chaney and his <laughs> head is like popping out of the screen and you're like what what's going on <laughs> that yeah that that I love that ending I love how it's it's basically like this weird unrelated ending but for some reason it just works yeah <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think there is that kind of element yeah. as well of, you know, kind of just, just throwing stuff out there, you know, <laughs> which uh, just, just works so well. <laughs> which uh, I suppose we, we probably ought to say, you know, like, yeah, it's no surprise that Sanjiro would be the one to, to make the, the manifest contest. But like when it started, you know, there was kind of this uncertainty, like, oh, you know, we, we've kind of done these abstract contests before and... You know, it feels like they get less entries, or, or else they, or else the entries are not exactly what you might have been 
hoping for like they might just end up being kind of more like regular brick films i don't know but this this contest seemed like a massive success not just in entry number but like the fact that all the entries were you know completely out there and trying new things and like really especially when we got to your film in the playlist we were saying at the time like you know this contest like people have gotten the the prompt and it yeah this is completely successful and this i think we actually said like this is exactly the kind of film that we would have hoped to have gotten but would have expected we never would have gotten <laughs> well yeah i mean i'm sure everyone interprets the theme a bit differently but yeah. i mean i thought it was pretty clear you know the prompt of it and yeah. um much clearer than the the movie magic one even though like i i kind of understood that but at the same time, like, I feel like more people understood this one Seems and really got way. into the spirit of it more. But of course, having said that, though, you know, there's no perfect answer as to like, oh, you have submitted the exact right thing or anything. It's just like, yeah. Just because you're expecting like a certain style or entry, like, I, I don't know if it feels so it's so weird because this contest is basically saying break the rules you know <laughs> yeah like there's rules but break the rules <laughs> yeah and again that's mostly i feel like it's up to interpretation and a lot of it is left open and on one side that could be kind of dangerous you know but on mm -hmm. the other side i think it's a good thing how open it is to interpretation and how many people can experiment with this prompt in like different ways and different unique ways and i think all the entries are solid by yeah. just how unique they are from each other while still like following that prompt mm -hmm. Absolutely, they're yeah. all very different films yeah i think the entire playlist was a great watch and yeah it seems like you know people really did connect with the contest and people seemed really excited about it you know and talking about the the films and just the contest idea in general like you could you could just tell by the how excited people were in the discord that uh yeah they really got it and it went over very well so i'm really really happy about that because you know for a few years now we've kind of been saying like oh the summer contest format is like we've, we've been saying it's like becoming less and less compatible with modern brick filming but it, to me, it seems like Manifest solved that problem by introducing, uh, you know, a specific different challenge that, you know, only the contest... Ha I mean, okay, he, I guess at, at any point you could just choose to make a, you know, something crazy. But the fact that the contest really, you know, told people go out and do this, it, it made them do it. And that gave it this, you know, this different quality to it. Something that we have been feeling now for the last, like, couple of years is kind of like... Like you were saying about like how, you know, it doesn't feel compatible and it doesn't maybe also to some degree it didn't doesn't feel kind of like as relevant or as engaging as like Thack and Roll and um something that we have felt is that the summer contest used to be for the most like impressive brick films of the year, whereas it's got to a level now where like yeah. Thack and Brawl uh, can end up, you know, producing some of the most impressive films. And I think um to see now like that having this one contest where uh, not only is it successful and we got you know like a, a really hugely kind of strong playlist but we've got like you had like you know in the the announcements you know like in the the stream and everything we had like loads of people in the discord um spamming the kind of you know make manifest yearly uh, and it's like <laughs> yeah. I just don't think I've seen we've seen that much kind of like um praise I think you know for for that I for agree, a long yeah. time. With the prompt it, it's really become its own thing. Like I can see this as its own contest apart from the summer contest. Or maybe it'll replace it, I don't know, but uh, like it feels like its own thing. Yeah. I, I almost forgot that this was the summer contest because <laughs> I, I was just thinking solely about the the prompt and yeah, how I mean different it was at this stage it is a, a bit early to say but I, i'll certainly be interested to see how people are feeling you know when, when the talk of hosting the next summer contest comes up because you know it, it might be worth sort of striking while the iron is still hot uh and sort of building up 
manifest as a a recognized contest, like how people know what Tekken and Brawl are, what you know they 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 know what the prompt is every time. Um, so it's it's definitely something worth thinking about because yeah, yeah the 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 way people responded to it yeah it was un- unlike what we've seen before, and and yeah the the results stream was great. Got a, another another shout out to Sanjiro <laughs> for that one. <laughs> it is kind of like it got to that point though, isn't it? Where it's like, uh, it's so it's so successful now that we're actually having to kind of like rethink what we're gonna do about a summer contest. <laughs> yeah. It is funny, but I just and I feel like you know people who might have been around while this was going on, and but they you know if if they didn't enter this one, they might think like, oh well, the first one was cool, so I really ought to enter the second one. So you might get a a really good entry number if if you continue it as like you know manifest two. Who knows? Yeah, I think there's, there is a lot of potential for it, and I feel like whatever happens, like I definitely see a future in it in in some form, for sure. Mm-hmm. But no, yeah, I guess we should, um, I guess, formally uh, go into uh, the top 10, even though we kind of have sort of already. <laughs> yeah, we should definitely talk about the top 10 now. Yeah, cool. Yeah, we're on to um, A Perfect Picnic by Joshua Amell, the, uh, the um, 10th place entry. Funny how place and 10th place are both Joshua's. That's true, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> results are bookended by Joshua's. Actually, this is another one that has like drawn on faces that look really funny. Yeah, yeah I love the uh, smile on one guy's yeah. face. Yeah, I, 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 that, that, that just works so successfully. I just love how it looks. Between this and Sanjira's film, and you know some other things, I guess it's something that people are kind of giving more consideration to, like just drawing on with a marker, and and the fact that it looks kind of goofy, and it, you know you can clearly tell it's drawn on, like it comes across as part of the style, and and it like it's meant to be funny. Yeah, I like how he extends the smile, but not the mustache. <laughs> I don't know why, it's just like very unique, goofy, it, it just looks great. Something that really stands out with this one for me, I feel like um, every shot is really fun to watch. I don't know if that's really, it's like a funny thing to say, but like, I just feel like throughout the film, there's always like, interesting things going on. I, I find it really fun to watch. And there's so many different like elements and stuff to it that I really I really enjoy. Things like the um, you know I, I love anything that's kind of uh, sh- you know like playing around with scale and you know like that kind of like above shot um, where it's just like you know studs and tiles running around and it, and um, how it kind of seamlessly then cuts back to um, yeah I love stuff like that scale and I, I there's also a really um, by this point, kind of iconic shot <laughs> where the legs, you know, extend. Yeah. It was just, just so well done. We're often talking on here about, you know, trying to avoid showing walking. And I feel like yeah, a cartoony style like this, like having him just extend his leg right to where he's going to end up and then just, you know, zoom to the, the spot. It makes it more fun to watch and it avoids having to just have him walk all the way there. I also really love, like, the stuff in the water as well. I also like the water shots. Um, supposedly, you're supposed to look at it where he's in the water, but on some shots, at least one of them, it looks like he's actually just floating on the surface of the water. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that was that. I really loved the the uh, the way that that was kind of put together. You know, like I think there's a there's a couple of live action shots where he's just like sinking, and then it cuts then pretty seamlessly back to stop motion. I thought that was really well done. I also really love there's a um the early on the shot where he's like um got that he's like putting uh, out the carpet and it the, you know and it kind of it kind of the way that that's animated is like frame mm-hmm. by frame that's a really good sort of watch where you've got like tile pieces and they they kind of change to slopes and it just looks really yeah. nice yeah I like stuff like that where it just extends by just adding more of the same brick. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the replacement animation is really good in this. I also really love that uh, when the uh, the sea monster um, sort of like throws up the uh, like skeletons and stuff. That was really funny. But yeah, um, definitely a solid tenth place entry, and um, it's always worth mentioning that there was a lot of films that were very close. Um, yeah, but... this was a this was a very close like you yeah. know. There, there was one that was solid. inspired by an old brick film series that's actually not available anymore called War Dogs, 
that uh, you know it was pretty funny like the the style was completely different and it but it seemed intentional with like funny parts where there's like a basically just a, you know a, a PNG of a boulder like rolling down stairs and then up the next set of stairs it, it was almost like it was like I, I kind of I don't want to say bad on purpose but <laughs> I don't know if that sounds bad but but we liked it is what I'm getting at that's like a name it can't I the uh, Orcs in Space Orcs in Space yeah, yeah I, I actually really I really enjoyed that one as well um, just oh, yeah, yeah it just really worked it, well that one reminded me of like uh, old Flash game oh yeah and, and, and... and I think there was literally like no traditional animation in terms of like, stop motion but like it just I think it was kind of well done, you know? <laughs> it looked like it was all just, like, editing, mm-hmm. honestly. Yeah, just moving sprites around. But it kind and of felt, it felt cool. like it was really kind of, I guess, artfully done, I guess is the way, you know, term, I, just, I just felt like it was really well done. But, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not even a top ten. Let's, <laughs> yeah, let's talk about, let's talk about ninth. We're, we're moving in the wrong direction here. <laughs> yeah. I know it's my fault, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got to talk about uh, Rancho. I really enjoyed Rancho, even though, yeah, I was saying this on the results stream, but even though it's unfinished, like, as it, as it went along and I was watching it, I was just thinking to myself, wow, you know, I have to place this. This has to be on the ballot because <laughs> it's just, everything that's here is, is so impressive. Particularly just how much character there is in the, the stop motion and the, the all the poses of the figures is just excellent. And really, you know, people ought to ought to look at poses like that and consider if they could uh, incorporate similar stuff into their own brick films. Yeah, when when I first watched this, I I wanted to see more of that um, the facial animation cuz when I first saw that, I was like blown away, like I mm. really wanted it to keep going. But but then when I saw like how much the figures were actually moving, like it it kind of doesn't need Yeah, it actually doesn't really. But... It works even even without faces. Because they're they're so expressive. There was actually, I think this is something that um, I think you may have said before, Penta, about you know how it works, even though it's kind of like not finished. There is a way that you could almost read into it as being kind of, and I, I don't think it was intentional, but like it, it it you it, you can almost kind of read it that way. It's almost like it feels like it kind of works. Well, yeah, it's in his favor in a way, like the way that it kind of like becomes more and more kind of like <laughs> unfinished, <laughs> I guess. The, uh, this has an ending. There, are, I, I'm guessing when it is finished, it won't. It won't have this shot where there's like you can see the hand and stuff. But like the things that the figures are saying at that point, it almost made it feel like it could have been. You could have tried to say that it was all intentional all along. Like it's meant to be a commentary on, you know, yeah, intentionally unfinished. Like talking about people, people trying, people creating stuff, and you know, putting so much of their time and effort into it. Like it, it still seems to work as a, as a film. Yeah, I mean, because that that at that moment she's saying about like how, you know, you're not gonna finish this piece and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. And 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 that that I mean that is basically what the whole film is about, and it kind of it just kind of works, you know, like thematically the fact that it's not finished. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but there are some kind of there are some real sort of standout um moments. I think the kind of one of the the main kind of standout parts is the uh. The window shot when when the kind of like um, banister thing kind of like falls onto his arm you know hands and he's kind of like uh yells you know that that shot is mm-hmm. really is really good and the, the set design is really interesting there as well you know yeah all sorts of different materials the leaves outside and blowing in the wind and then you know you can't see that his hands are out of his arms it just looks like it, it tricks your mind into thinking that his arms are like stretched out yeah I really like that. Yeah, so it's a, that's a good thing, like sort of um, creatively blocking your sight of something so that you can imply something else. I also really liked the beetle that was like um, a dog and <laughs> just like the way that it's just moving around like crazy. That I found that gen- I found that um, genuinely really funny. Yeah. I like how even though it's a beetle, like I can totally see just by the way it's moving that it's like a dog, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Or it's like chasing its own tail or whatever. And it's kind of just like to scale, like it's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and I imagine that it's a real insect, I think. Yeah, I think so. The set of the house, it's like a dollhouse. It's like, 
it's decorated with like Lego, but the set itself isn't actually Lego. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's all an original construction, just using various bits and pieces. I like that, yeah. But yeah, um, number eight, Endless Chase by Codeman. <laughs> and I, I believe this was made so that it could loop over and over again, I which mean, is why it has no credits. <laughs> yeah, I commented that I could see this as someone's screensaver. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's two films in the in the playlist that uh, kind of could work as a screensaver because you've got Joker dies and uh, Endless Chase. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, we oh, have yeah, to we mention. We gotta talk about Joker dies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean Joker, Joker dies. I mean Joker or Jaker or yeah, Joker. Joker dies. <laughs> it made the top ten in our hearts. You know. <laughs> <laughs> honorable mention for sure. Most honorable mention. <laughs> I think I could see either Endless Chase or that as my screensaver. Maybe both, I don't know. <laughs> but no, um, in this chase, um, it does the the loop, I think, really effectively. I think once you kind of... It takes some, maybe a, a bit of time for you to kind of realise what, um, what he's doing, but once you do, you kind of just realise like, like how well it's done, I guess. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, it is something that seems to come up a fair bit, uh, you know, in tech playlists and... And there was a there was a number of them in this contest as well. The, the, the like endlessly looping films, uh, milking a reindeer was an interesting one from this contest for sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, this one did it did it really well. Uh, and of course, you know we have to mention the eight FPS character animation. It's fantastic. Yeah, it's really hard to get that looking so good. With the lighting and the frame rate, and definitely with like the the blues and the greens made it very aesthetically pleasing and dreamlike. Yeah. I really like the um the sort of splashes of the water as well. Where it's kind of like a sort of jelly kind of like uh texture. I don't know what I don't know what he, exactly what he used, but it that that looks that works really well. Yeah, I'm not sure what it is. I mean I don't know, it could be hair gel or something. I remember yeah. Zach and Nathan used hair gel for uh, uh but it wasn't the brick film, but it was the the Star Wars contest entry they did. It looked really good as waves of water. And I but, think the um, the lighting works really well as well. And I think that um, the way that it kind of shines on the water, you get that kind of like moonlight sort of look. And mm-hmm. uh, certainly, Codeman's one of the best animators going at the moment. I'd be really interested to see if he'd make a film with a more story to it. You know, if you could combine this the the, the quality of animation with a, a more sort of cohesive story. I don't know. You you could have a classic on your hands. It took me um, a few watches to find out that the cop actually becomes the guy in green and then he falls into the water and then it's the cop. So he's like chasing himself. Mm -hmm. I think it's very clever in how he did it where it's not just like he could have just looped it where it's one guy chasing the other. But then that guy is also chasing him. Mm -hmm. But the fact that it's the same guy and doesn't even know, I think is... uh, very clever in telling the type of story where it, yeah. it you know it's not just the animation that's looping but the events in the story are looped as well and I, I just think it's really clever how he did that but i think what made this work is that he like varied the order that things happen in you know it doesn't it doesn't just feel like it returns you know like copy pasting the same group of shots over and over again I think that was kind of um, one of the things that made it f- made it that much better. Because uh, I think he could have very easily have just done that, but I think that the, the the way that it kind of it kind of shifts perspectives. I think a couple of times, I guess in, in a way you're kind of going you you sort of supposed upon the perspective of the characters. You know, you're kind of like working it out as it's going along, um, which I thought was kind of clever. Um, you know, you see it originally I think from, like from the cop's perspective, and then you see it from his perspective as the green man. And then you realize that it's actually the same perspective. Yeah. And that just, like, blew me away. Like, I'm not sure if, like, the character, like, forgets that he's in this chase or not. Like, wouldn't he figure out that he's, like, chasing himself? Maybe when he falls in the water, he forgets? Or Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of took it that, yeah, there's, there's sort of an implication that once it kind of starts over again, it's like he doesn't remember. Like, he, like his own memory starts over as well. Yeah, and I also like how, you know, he could have just made the whole thing and then put it on there. And, but I like how he uh, repeats the film again, so you, you actually know that it loops. Mm-hmm. 
correct me if I'm wrong, but it looks like he made all the shots and then put the same exact shots. So it like plays twice. Well, I, <laughs> if it does, if it does play twice in the exact same order, I, I actually didn't, didn't notice, <laughs> which is a, a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Um, I think we should talk about number seven, Kingdom by uh, Osam Studios. Not entirely sure if that's how you pronounce it, but yeah. Yeah, I guess I guess so. I I always thought it was Osmosis Studios. <laughs> I always put it that way. It d- d- doesn't have quite that many letters. Yeah, uh, I guess the way that your your I mean, um, it, maybe it's just meant to be Awesome Studios. Who knows? <laughs> I think it's just the way that your you know your brain kind of always reads it a certain way. You know. Yeah. Like, but um, but no, I mean, this one, I found it really kind of. I guess I think I mentioned this in the stream. Like it's just doing something like just very particularly special with the animation i think yeah just like the way that the the head kind of moves and and stuff like we've we've seen like in the past like you know sanding um but like to this kind of level where it feels really like so smooth is is really impressive i think but it's not just the fact that it's you know quote unquote smooth which is of course a, a word oh, yeah. that we, we don't like but it feels <laughs> very natural like it feels human the the way they move more so than most brick films. Uh, Can't believe yeah. I said that. Can't believe I said smooth. <laughs> What's happening to me? <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I was I was wondering if he even did he sand down the like the leg pegs to make the torso rock forward and back a little bit because like it it's just it's so subtle. It's really impressive. Yeah, it's amazing how you can do these movements so subtly that like you don't even notice. Like you're almost taken out of hey, this is a brick film, you know? Yeah. And I think as well, like, um, you know, you got the guy in the on the phone. Um, the way that his head moves as well is, like, pretty unique. I don't think I've seen that that often, where, you know, it kind of tilts up and stuff, like, and it's, and, you know, it's kind of, like, a slightly raised up, you know, on, on, the, pe- on the peg as well. And, of course, the cinematography, really, in all his stuff, it's, it's all his standout. Yeah, he did, um film for the uh the say the, the horror like contest or com I can't remember what it was called last year. Yeah, Justified. Yeah. Like, that was that was uh really really visually quite quite amazing as well. Mm-hmm. And uh and, and Smeagol's voice acting is is really good. <laughs> it's nice nice to hear Smeagol uh, you know, still lending his voice to a brick film. For sure, yeah. I almost feel like I don't have a lot to say about this one, other than it's just like, yeah, it's it's really solid, you know. Yeah, this is really well done. It's going with the the four three uh, aspect ratio, mm-hmm. kind of the 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 role <laughs> had. <laughs> <laughs> it just kind of works so well, I think. The fire looks nice too, and I, I don't know. Is, there might be a, a combination of different frame rates in this. Like maybe the fire is on twos, and some of the figure animation is on ones. I'm not sure. It does look like um, when the um, the guy kind of like bends down, like it kneels, like it. It kind of looks like a kind of different frame rate to like you know when Jesus is kind of like moving. You know, it's like I don't know. It does seem as though there's kind of a combination of different. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I also like how you can see the lighting with the fire on the crown when it yeah. doesn't show like fire in the actual shot, but. That's true. Yeah. Took that extra detail in mind that. There's fire and it's showing up on his crown and it's still moving. And of course, that's a big benefit of doing things like that for real in the set rather than having digital fire. Yeah, not not just with things emitting light, but yeah, I do like when you try and keep as much in the set, you know, for the sake of the reflections as possible. It, yeah, it helps it make it feel very much very real, you know. Yeah, like the set doesn't just end as soon as the, the frame ends. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Instead of just like for this one shot, you know, um, okay, it's zoomed in on him, but you still need to know like um, where he is in that space. And yeah, reflection of the fire certainly helps. But even sometimes, like when I was uh, animating with the, the courtroom set in Tiger Trouble 2, and the walls were tan. Uh, Sometimes the lighting would be different. Like if I let's say if I removed an entire wall to point the camera in, there'd be the lighting would be too dark then. 
but if I if I replaced as much of the tan wall as possible, just leave a tiny hole in the wall for the camera to look through and keep as much of the wall there as possible, you know, light bounces off the tan bricks and onto the fronts of the figures and it you know, it, it just keeps it all consistent and like even just parts of the set that you can't see, they still affect what what you what you can see. <laughs> yeah. so that that's I think that's worth keeping in mind. Yeah, you have to be very careful with that. Uh, do we want to head over to sixth place? Oh yeah, of course, Revoca's entry. But one of the things I find really funny um, about when we, because we had the playlist of like um, kind of inspirations uh, for to be able to get an idea of you know what to kind of like try and do for the um, for manifest, and you know Revoca was of course was on there, and I find it kind of funny that was he in spite of himself. <laughs> <laughs> But but no, I I I um I feel like you know this is a kind of a, a perfect kind of contest for Abaka, and I'm really glad to see him um yeah. place. I mean, yeah, I think we we were pretty much expecting it, but we were all hoping that Robaka would enter, and yeah, <laughs> here we are. But yeah, it's nice for a contest where yeah, something like this actually can place. It's like you know I don't mean to imply that it couldn't place in any other contest, but it just feels like when judging other contests, it feels like you're going to give more weight to things that have, you know, the most perfect animation or the most perfect cinematography. Uh, but it's, I guess in this contest, you know, it was more about the, the ideas and the, the feeling, just the, the vibes. <laughs> yeah, he always manages yeah. to like create this feeling and keep you like captivated without knowing what's even going on. <laughs> and, yeah. um, without there being like a, I mean, I don't know if there is one in his mind, but uh, like a clear story or anything. But I mean, there's certainly some things that are in certain patterns, it seems like. But yeah, I feel like it's something that I had to sort of learn to appreciate. But like, you know, there can be films that you enjoy watching just just as a sort of construction of visual and sound elements. And yeah, like, you know, you don't have to be thinking, what does it mean? You know. You just got a vibe sometimes. Like his one film with, uh, I like how he uses the Technic figures. Mm -hmm. In this film as well, he used one of those Technic figures. And uh, I think it's very unique because you don't see those as often. Yeah, that's true. Really. Yeah, Ravoka is single-handedly keeping Technic figures alive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, you know, the Technic figures, usually they're so unusual and they stick out. and like, whoa, somebody's using Technic figures. But in Ravoka's films, it's like, yeah. <laughs> That's that's a character in a book of film, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it kind of just feels like it's a staple of of a yeah. Waka, like uh, by this point. Um, but um, yeah, no, I, I definitely kind of I definitely feel that with with like Waka's films. So it's definitely like a, it's a it's a kind of it's a definitely a, I guess a vibe. I guess is is yeah. what I'd, I'd say. It's like another thing is why I really like uh, and this is something that as well with with a lot of Waka's films is the the music and. Which I, I guess I think, which I believe he he actually composes himself. Well, right? I think he has a I guess a friend who does the music, yeah. but it's it is original, created for the film. And that's something yeah. that um, one of the things that I really I actually really liked about this film was the um the kind of the song because it never it, it genuinely like slaps, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's cool. Yeah, it, the song definitely goes so well with it, and I really like how he used that light board. And I don't know exactly how he animated that, but. Just like all those lights. Mm -hmm. um, I guess you can program it with a computer or something. Because like at some point it's, it spells out manifest. That was cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was just about to say it, it spells out manifest. I thought that was really cool. And I don't know how much work it take, it, it would have taken, but it, it looks like a lot of work. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah, and, and if there's people who uh, aren't as up to date on Revoca films as as we are, <laughs> uh, I definitely would recommend people watch Polyester, the Easter entry, the Ten Brick Easter entry, and uh, do you guys still have the band? Is another highlight. I, I actually um I was actually rewatching Toy Story uh the other day as well. It's one of my favorite ones from like 2009. <laughs> Probably haven't seen that since it came out. <laughs> That's the, the Star entry, yeah. Yes, guess another thing, like Revoca is Revoca enters every contest and has been around for you know since Brickfilms dot com. It's, it's amazing. I can definitely see it. Like he, it it feels um 
like an older brick film like even his most recent ones especially this one it feels like it wasn't made during this time but like in a good way yeah well actually i, I yeah i think that about your own stuff as well like it, it reminds me of brickfilms.com era stuff <sighs> Which I mean, I, I yeah, I I don't even know if I can explain what I mean by that. Like that that could mean different things to different people, but but that's it. It's a, it's a, I mean that in a good way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I I don't know if he has this style like purposefully or it just comes out naturally. But um, for me, I, I I wasn't even like brick filming back then, so I I I don't know. It's all again subconscious for me. <laughs> yeah, I always have felt like. You know, whenever I see your stuff, it's just, there's a very de- a definite kind of, um, I guess, Joshua Nelson style. I can tell straight away, I think. And again, in, in a good way. Mm-hmm. Actually, yeah. yeah. Mortigi Muta by Rebecca from 2004 is another one that everyone should see. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, and that's all I'll say about that one. <laughs> Do we want to uh, yeah, head over to Question Before fifth, the Board? Fifth place, yeah. Question Before the Board by Joko. Yeah, I mean, straight away, I feel like genuinely quite uh, a task to not only you know create create an incredibly impressive film on its own but then to create a uh, you know an interactive game mm-hmm. as well um i think yeah i love that kind of experimental side of it you know yeah but you know the funny thing is i i feel like <laughs> the, just the first part on its own was enough like it was you know manifesty enough and like the chess scene is is just really excellent yeah, I felt that too. And I, I wonder if, you know, he put all that work into the first one because it's the first one or because he was afraid that, I mean, I don't know, as a judge, do you like count the, the other videos, the interactive part as when you're judging, like, or is it just the first one? <laughs> well, I was kind of struggling with like, yeah, I, I think there's no definitive answer there, really. But I, I guess I just thought in any case... Uh, yeah the it, first one was the strongest <laughs> yeah i mean i know that they're they're based on on a game but the, the character designs like like even if they are based on pre-existing characters like just the, still the way that they are constructed it, they're they're so good like you know they're so different and memorable like you got the guy yeah. with the blue tack arm and those the squid and and like you know people with funny shaped torsos and things I, I really like kind of like steampunk kind of style, you know, aesthetic to it. And um, yeah, the chess game is, is just another thing entirely. Like, it's just incredible. I love that the way that, you know, you kind of have like, there's like literally just like like two two frames where, you know, it turns into um, these minifigures like fighting, and, uh, you know, before it kind of like cuts off again. And it's just so visually satisfying, you know? Yeah. All the, all the camera movements that he does are always so satisfying and make it feel more like a ride than a film, which I mean that in a good way. But <laughs> yeah. yeah, controversial statements. <laughs> following the the movements of the chess pieces, and I I just like how you know the chess board and the chess pieces themselves aren't Lego, but when they like clash, you can see the Lego pieces, and I don't know. I I thought that was really cool. Yeah, certainly the way the camera kept turning around the chessboard really added a lot to the scene. And also as well, like he used wheel fire as well. <laughs> yeah, I kind of want to say something about the choose your own parts. Although I guess that there's, I mean, it's no surprise because I mean, it's, you know, it'd be a lot of work to keep up the same standard of quality for, you know, multi, like t- 10 or however many parts. But I guess there's kind of less to say because there's less animation. <laughs> <laughs> there was a really funny part though when the squid guy like, face plants and food and eats it in a really funny way that's that's certainly worth a look i think that was my favorite route to go besides like just the first video was the one where with the chef and they're eating food actually this is really kind of like uh picked up as well like it's uh go over the, the main parts got over a thousand views but then like the actual interactive parts have got a decent amount of views as well like people are mm-hmm. Kind of really interacting with it. I know? think it was shared by the creators of the game it's based on. So that's cool. Yeah, that's, that's, that's so cool. Yeah, I mean, I kind of feel like making something... Yeah. I don't know. Recently, I've been feeling like making something based on something just to see if I could pull it off. Like, <laughs> almost like for the longest time, I've been making things with no intention of trying to get views or whatever. But it's like, hmm, maybe I should just do one out of curiosity. <laughs> 
just to see like what you can do with it and yeah. how you can translate it into Lego form. I also really like the title cards, the the graphic there. It looks really good. And I just think in, in general, like the the actual uh, concept um, of it is uh, enough to really kind of uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and I like how he he did an even amount, like with the interactive, he did an even amount of um, videos across the whole thing. So like, you know, you'd always end up um, with two options and then it would lead you to the end. So there's like, I believe, six endings? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah. I reckon we should talk about fourth place. Color? Yeah. Yeah, but I, yeah, that's what's called. Yeah, um, by Paradox Studios. Paradox Studios. Yeah. One one of the, one of the interesting things about um, the film is that like, they say that they this is um, not like the final cut of the film, but the funny thing the thing is that it it, it really does feel like a complete film. Yeah, it does. It feels um, complete and has a, a satisfying ending. And yeah, like yeah, at the end they say that there's supposed to be like or two two to four minutes more. Like. I, I was certainly confused as to, like, I thought it didn't need any more. Again, it's like, yeah, th- there's enough here. I mean, it, you know, it, it plays fourth, so that's saying a lot. Story d- definitely feels, like, complete. And, like, unlike Rancho, where, like, you can tell it's unfinished, like, this feels very much complete. Yeah, like, if they never, if they didn't say it was unfinished, I wouldn't have guessed. <laughs> yeah, and it also says that they'd add, like, an original soundtrack, so I guess, uh this music that they use wouldn't be in the final version, I'm guessing. I guess so, yeah. Which I, I thought was interesting, because I, I really thought the music also fit with the video, but yeah. I'm interested yeah. to see how the other version differentiates. And Yeah, I mean, yeah, of course, it is always nice to have original music, uh, but yeah, I mean, I thought that this fit just fine, yeah. One of the things I really love about the, uh, the film was the, you know, there's a couple of, like, specific, like, uh, effects and shots I really like like um, I really like how you know the girl with the, the colour like the way that um, like it kind of continues as she sort of uh, kind of walks walks off and you have like this the kind of like orange and yellow bricks kind of following her mm-hmm. I thought that was a, a really um, cool effect um, and there's, there's like um, another shot a, a real standout shot I remember when we were all watching it, that we were like, um, "Wow, you know the the shot of the the, the Bahitan on the, on the bus and the camera kind of moves like that's just like a, such such just such a good shot." Yeah, the the bus shot and the like flower flying in the air and falling down shot. There are a couple of shots where that happens. Yeah, really impressive stuff. <laughs> and then the the shot of like you know the way that the ground kind of like collapses as he's oh, yeah. kind of. Uh, no, he falls. That that was also really cool. But yeah, I definitely liked a lot of what was going on with the the isolated color effect and like when the when the color grows and like you know it sort of expands in waves. Like you know, he doesn't just fade in, fade up all the colors all at once. Like like outside the windows remains black and white before the the color reaches that that portion of the the city. You know. Yeah, it's like painting, like spilling onto the scene yeah i mean there's definitely a lot in this that i feel um would it must have taken a lot of time to really do well um and it kind of reminds me a bit of kind of some of the stuff i was trying to do with um my uh Brawl 2019 entry uh, orchestral palette which um kind of i guess sort of similar in the way of that you know there's kind of like the sort of going into color and stuff um but it was a somewhat smaller scale to some degree in that I wanted, in terms of like, I, I wanted to have this shot where like everything was sort of starting to go into colour and you'd see like the entire like kind of land change. But um, obviously a tight with the with the sort of roll time, you couldn't really do that. So it was really cool seeing that kind of a similar kind of uh, concept, but done really to its full potential in that way with the colour kind of, you know, all coming coming together there is one more thing that i want to mention i'm not sure <laughs> the best way to frame it but i, I feel like saying you know <laughs> we we were willing to look past the frame blending and that's high praise <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's something that uh there's a couple of like moments it's not generally that noticeable but there's a couple of points where 
it kind of um you get that kind of messy effect of like the frames kind of merging together like bits of the ground shifting around like kind of gloopy yeah if if they do release a second cut you know i'd like if they could render it without the frame blending i feel like it'd be a lot less there'd be less distracting things i yeah. felt like that was almost intentional though like um it could be intentional with the color parts like the the color trails maybe i feel like it, it could have its uses in like you know 0.1 percent of cases <laughs> <laughs> I, it actually if that was what he was trying to do with the the color like the parts that night i think that that was pretty successful maybe maybe he was sort of like the reason why he was doing the frame blending was because of that and then it kind of you know they kind of rendered the entire thing like that um it also affecting the actual animation i'm not sure but i i think it, it has a really i really like the ending of this or, you know it ends yeah. the sunset and it's a really cute ending i think yeah the colors in that shot look great the lighting looks really good too. Yeah, I guess we should should we head over to the uh, top three. Yeah. Uh, number three, we've got uh, Plinks by uh, Really, and um, this one is just like um, a real standout for the, uh, specifically, you know, particularly for like the animation and everything. Um, and I know this is the first brick film. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I know we were in the chat. We were like, "What? Like how?" <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, like it's well. It's clearly, he's put a lot of thought and planning into, you know, the stop motion itself. And it, there are a couple of tests with these character designs on the YouTube channel. But yeah, I mean, as far as non minifig character animation goes, like this is absolutely fantastic. And it's like basically all all in the the character animation and sound design. Um, but it's like so much fun to watch. Just incredibly oh, yeah, well like, done. It's so fun to watch and. There's so much in terms of you can tell that they're at least in, experienced in animation, even if it's not in uh, brick filming. At least in terms of like understanding. Oh yeah, clearly the understands principles. the principles. Yeah. And stretch essentially and it's replacement. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah, there's so much of the characters. I think like the the way that that you know blinks and um, just like the bounciness of the animation, but also um, the sound design really adds so much to it as well. Yeah, the the but the head sort of like moves you slowly, and you have that kind of like stone kind of like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then also you have like the when when he's transforming into this like huge like beast, and you have like the the sound of like I think it's like I think he said it was like celery. They use like a combination of different sounds. Yeah. And, I think you know, chicken have, like, bones kind of, like, cracking and stuff. Yeah, like like. It just um. It adds so much to what was already like a really sort of well put together film. And I love how he used like he he could have done one certain eyepiece for both of them, but I like how they're both different. Like he uses the the printed one by one brick with the the eye, and then he uses the headlight brick with the the eyepiece. Yeah, the tile differently for both for both creatures. Yeah, there's there's a real kind of like thought put into like how. Very simple designs, very very little kind of like uh, you know sort of like couple of bricks, but like and yet there is like so much character and individuality in in sort of in both of them is is pretty impressive. And I also really love how like you know the one with the the print like the printed eye, it doesn't just like you know he could have very easily just had like replaced it with like a um just a clear you know just a just a um a plain um, one by one brick for like for the blinking but instead they it goes the extra mile in having that kind of like creative kind of like blinking effects with the 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 plates you know the small plate pieces and that was uh the stud in yeah and like i think this is pretty inspirational in that like you know it doesn't even have a set <laughs> and like <laughs> it's this good with just a, a couple of character designs it's like you know sometimes people say like oh i wish i could still be brick filling but i don't have enough space in my college dorm room or whatever but like you know you could make something like this and, and it might still place in the top three in a contest i mean it does say a lot that you know you meant you mentioned that like not having a set and i don't think i've ever actually thought about it <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah you don't, don't even think about it because yeah you just focus so much on animation of the characters 
even though, like I, I, I think that the back wall is just the wall like of the room that it's being shot in. I feel like if anything was in the background, it would be too distracting from the characters. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, it's, yeah. The character animation is front and center. That's the focus. Yeah, I also kind of like how, um, and I guess this was just uh, just by nature of just where he was filming. But like, I like that it's not just like a, a white expanse. You know, it's like the. <laughs> well, yeah, the the purple contrast nicely with the yellow characters. Yeah. So even if that wasn't like necessarily intentional, it just it, it complements them and, and really makes them pop out, which is good. I thought it was gray like the base plate, but now that I'm seeing it, yeah, that's purple. <laughs> <laughs> it just blends so well. We uh we did briefly mention the influences on Stuck and the fact that it clearly expands upon them. But yeah, Stuck is this was an, an amazing entry. And and I was it. I think it was the first one that came in, which was like you know yeah. mind blowing, and yeah, really you know this another one where it's the kind of thing where it's like man, we we didn't expect that somebody would take the the prompt of the contest and you know go this far with it, um, as far as you know combining different mediums and you know like it's a brick film, but it's also like anybody could watch it and it it's just it it works as as a short film, you know what I mean. <laughs> I I mean, how often does like the the first submission <laughs> end up uh, placing in the top three? <laughs> but like, I I feel like it's such a great start to the whole playlist. I think like I remember fe- I remember feeling the the first time we watched this that like like oh okay then you, it, this is a good sign. Yeah, and, it's like, like okay, peop- it, this has been successful. <laughs> people, you know. At least someone has picked up picked it up like pretty perfectly, you know that the the what we were what we were trying to go for, and um, yeah, just like I really love the the paint transitions. Yeah, the transitions are so cool, and also as well like how it goes in the music as well. Um, I am uh, uh, somewhat biased when it comes <laughs> to like classical music in in Vic films. It's something that I I just generally really love, but. Um, it just works so well, I think, with this, and I, I think it goes so well with the the music goes so well with like what's going on. Mm-hmm. And of course, when you have a classical piece, you know, there's often like certain dramatic stings or sections or whatever that can really drive like what you do visually. Like, you could see that in this film, you know, things are timed to the music, mm. um, and it means you don't really you don't need like super in depth sound design. So that's also nice. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I've definitely felt that in the past. <laughs> but um, as well, I think that, uh, I guess, I mean, obviously it's not nearly as long as um, Plastic Plastic Theatre, but it's another example of like having a, a longer kind of brick film, but it doesn't mm-hmm. really feel like the length, you know? You don't you don't feel like, oh no, this is, you know, going on too long. And, and compared yeah. to, you know, many brick films that are even like, you know, a minute long, whatever, <laughs> it just goes by you know but it certainly was impressive that it's like seven nearly seven minutes long and it has you know so many different styles uh there's just so much packed into it uh, uh, but you know and it sustains it for that length of time yeah I know, I know the winner is 20 minutes long but like seven minutes is still relatively long for a brick film but i was just super impressed that there, there's as much of it as there is yeah and i love those uh transitions not only with the paint but like the the different stars and i love how like a certain point in the video like it fast forwards through that or Mm. again i it it just goes off the rails like yeah it it, and it just shows like stock footage at the end of like (laughs) canada for some reason and (laughs) well i did kind of want to know at what was going on and yeah uh, uh, the guy who made this lives in canada so that's why it's all <laughs> canada stuff the crumpled up paper and the sound effects that he used for that i think it, it works very well and it's like very c- creepy and you know very uh like un- unnerving you, d- you don't know what's happening but you're just in it for the ride yeah sort of thing well the, the impression that i get is that the spacemen their interactions is like sort of mirroring like politicians being all nice to each other in person but then like screwing each other over like countries i don't know 
there's definitely something going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's definitely. Yeah, I think there is something going on. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. It's like, <laughs> but like some, something that, it, as far as I can tell, it's something sort of general. It's not like I don't think it's you know <laughs> pushing an agenda or whatever. Like I think there's, I think it's it's definitely open for interpretation in terms of how you kind of read it and what's like going on. Is that like, you know like, but you know it's it's definitely very interesting. Mm-hmm. I kind of think, I think it's one of his, one of his strengths as well. It's just like uh, you definitely feel like there is a lot to kind of like read into it and kind of like it, on rewatch. Oh yeah, definitely. Kind of it, it, I'd, I'd recommend stuff, people yeah. watch this one more than once. Yeah, I actually noticed something um, when watching the second time. Um, it was kind of weird. Like when one of the astronauts throws the back of the spaceship to the other one, and he leaves with the whole spaceship. There's another shot where the astronaut that threw the back part still has the back part behind him. <laughs> I, I thought it was strange. I'm not sure if that was a mistake or intentional or what. It, it sounds like it. I mean, it, I, maybe he shot a couple of shots of the one guy, you know, as a, a block and just forgot to remove it. I know I, I, I did things like that in the past where I'd forget to remove or or even forget to put back in something like in, in old films like in old benny and lee films i made that like pieces of furniture might have been taken out to get the camera in a certain position and then in the next shot like a chair is missing or you know something's missing that's not supposed to be missing mm-hmm. but of course if he, if he wants to he could just say that there's some deeper meaning we, we just need to keep watching the film until we understand why the, the part part of the spaceship is magically back there <laughs> And this then, like, completely changes the entire story now, you know, <laughs> the fact that... <laughs> I mean, there's so much weird stuff going on in this film that you, you could just see that as intentional, or, like, the first time I watched it, I didn't even notice, so, like, yeah. it could just fly past you, you know? I, I really like the scene where it shows the close-up of the astronaut, and, like, a, like there's a tear that goes down. I think that's is that drawn digitally, I think. I don't know, I, th- I thought it looked fair. Yeah, it's always cool to see people uh, using hand-drawn stuff, combining it with brick filming. It's like weird cartoon characters in this, making funny noises. You know, sometimes all you need is weird blobs making funny noises. Yeah. <laughs> in class, cool music. Um, I guess, I mean, we have talked about it a bit already, <laughs> but I guess we should head over to uh, number one. <laughs> well, uh, well, yeah, what else can we say, but uh, congratulations. <laughs> yes, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, yeah, great, great film, <laughs> a worthy winner in my opinion. We've, yeah, we, we've said a lot. What is there anything we haven't covered yet? <laughs> well, yeah, one thing I, I did say before, but you know, I, I love the fact that this contest allowed for the possibility for a fully live action brick film to win first place. Well, that was cool. Yeah, that's why I'm shocked that. <laughs> it even came close to like, <laughs> like I don't know, because I, I I was actually kind of like worried how not just the judges but like other people would view this because it's like you know even I and and that's the thing like even I like prefer stop motion all the way but you know I I wanted to personally get out of my own comfort zone and do something different and see what I can do with it you know yeah. We we all love the shot when the guy is walking on strings. <laughs> it's so good. Um, but yeah, again, like as I was saying, nobody was thinking that any particular style should be considered inherently better or worse. But it just so happened that yeah, we just thought that you know, Plastic of a Theater was just such a, a good film. Yeah, I think I think as well. Like um, you know, we we mentioned uh, how much we loved the um popcorn scene already but i think there's there's so many i mean you know i i that that scene and then i think the the actual like the puppets um is is so good and and the um the dance and like there's there's like the, uh, the so laugh track even like... though there's just one guy in the audience <laughs> that's great yeah yes <laughs> <laughs> i was almost not gonna put a laugh track but i i don't know i thought it would add to it because i wanted to make him feel like you know he's the only one there in the theater besides the puppets themselves mm-hmm. and it's another film with drawn on faces is draw- <laughs> drawn on faces seem to be the way of the future 
I really love the, the, the you know, the, the part when it kind of, like, you know, it, it cuts rapidly, you know, over and over again from, like, the, the puppet to hit to him to laugh or laughter, and it kind of, like, gets kind of, like, more and more hectic, you know? <laughs> And also, though, like all the kind of like um, messages that you know in in amongst in amongst the uh, film that are there for like a frame, you know. Yeah, I wasn't sure how many people would catch that and actually put in time to like pausing it and reading it. <laughs> but yeah, I think I think we had to check them just to make sure there was <laughs> nothing nothing strange going on. <laughs> but yeah, no, I I did. Um, check a few of them and understood, you know. Oh, the yeah, there's there's something additional going on here. But I I think I think I let the let the viewers you know go and look and figure that out for themselves. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I don't want to say anything because yeah, <laughs> you know if if I would I would have said it in the film. But yeah, mm-hmm, yeah. <laughs> I, I I know what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> I also really like the design of the um the dancer as well is 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 so good like the um you use like did you use like an um the a lego egg piece for the head yeah, uh, that... I turned it upside down yeah uh, that's good that's the one thing that I built a year ago actually I built that a year ago and I was going to film with that I I think at one point I was planning on using that uh figure for my brawl entry that year, but I decided to do something else. So this film felt like the perfect opportunity to use that figure. And the hard part was trying to make <laughs> that figure come alive because I knew it would be difficult with how it's designed. But... but you know, I think this film kind of raises an interesting question, and I don't have the answer to it. But like, this is a brick film, uh, and I'm kind of thinking to myself, like, imagine if somebody made something like this for brawl or tech you know, some other contest that wasn't specifically telling people to, like, break the, the rules and stuff. Like, I'm trying to I'm trying to imagine, like, let's say, you know, if there was a fully live-action brawl entry, but but we just thought it was, you know, really, really good. Like, could it win? Uh, something yeah, to think I about, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, yeah, I think... Because, you know, yeah, if, yeah. if it's a brick film in a brick film contest and we think it's that good, like, who knows? <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it is hard to tell, really. But, of course, you know, I feel like it'd be very hard to to make something that really works as well as this does. Like you know, you you couldn't just make a live action brick film and think you're instantly going to win a contest just because this one. Because you know that that would be missing missing the forest for the trees as far as what makes this good. That's why I really wanted to like. Um, I mean, it's crazy that I won because um, when I entered this, I was just thinking, you know. Oh, I really want to enter this, but I don't want to spend too much time on it. So, hmm, maybe <laughs> if I make it all video, it'll go by quicker. <laughs> in, in a way, it kind of did, but at the same time, like a lot of it was building the sets and the puppets and stuff. But yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised if you were watching the results stream and like it was getting closer and closer to number one and I'm. I mean, were, were you thinking like, oh, I guess I mustn't have made the top 10 because it was all live action? <laughs> uh, yeah, a, a little part of me was saying that, but <laughs> I, I, I don't I don't really know. <laughs> yeah, I guess in, in a way it, it is kind of one of those films where it's like, and it probably I guess it is because of the contest, but it's like you weren't, you probably had like no idea whether it was like not going to place or, or place in the first, you know? <laughs> yeah, I I had no idea, but see, I always try my best to make my films uh, stand out as much as possible, especially when I'm entering a contest. And, you know, with this film, since it was all video, I I wanted to make make a reason for it to be all video, you know. I wanted to take advantage of it and do it the best way that, that I can. I guess it worked out. <laughs> <laughs> it certainly did. I think as well, like there's so much you do within the within the film, which I don't think you really could have done, or at least it wouldn't have been as effective in uh, stop motion. Um, you know, like you know, obviously the popcorn scene, but then also like the the puppet and and well, pretty much all of it really. Like, yeah. well, I think you really took full advantage of doing stuff that you wouldn't have been able to do otherwise. The popcorn and other things like that, it, it, it was totally like, yeah, you know, this had to be live action. 
you know, it's it's not just using live action just for the sake of it being different. But like, no, it's yeah, it's always important to think about why you're actually using what you're using, and like, is it is it relevant to the film? And this this pulls that off really well. Yeah, like the puppet show as well, of course. I feel like that's something that, um, not just brick filmers, but any filmmaker mm. in general would I keep agree. in mind, like different uh like what you're using um why are you using it like Mm -hmm. different styles of animation or recording or whatever you're doing or even down to something as specific as like why are you framing a shot a certain way it's the same principle different effects that you could use like why why do it this way and not that way you know like Mm -hmm. i don't know i think it's something to keep in mind Absolutely. And, and yeah, I certainly hope that a contest like this, you know, helps to get people thinking about things like that. Yeah, definitely. And I think all the more reason for like hoping that this or like contest similar to it at least kind of, you know, bring in that kind of uh, experimental kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. You know? But actually, you know, I feel like saying, let's say hypothetically, if there was a manifest too, I would hope that people don't think along the lines of like oh you know all the styles have already been done like oh there's already been a live action one or there's already been a you know insert whatever thing here it's because like you know you could do a style that's already been done but make a completely different film with it it goes Uh, back to what we're saying earlier about ideas like that already existed that we didn't know about mm -hmm. same thing style like at the end of the day it's still going to be yours it's still going to be your film so you you can make it different as possible or you can make it similar but like with stuck you can get inspired by a certain film and make it your own you know yeah that's that yeah stuck is definitely a great example of that and yeah and i hope that i hope it comes across that when we talk about stuck and like it being influenced by things like we're, we're saying that in a positive light <laughs> yeah yeah yes yeah definitely <laughs> It, it's certainly like its own thing now. Absolutely. I mean, I, I could even imagine somebody coming along and being inspired by Stuck and making making something that's reminiscent of, of this this Stuck, not the other Stuck, but, you know, <laughs> building on it and doing something new. This contest definitely is kind of uh, the perfect one for kind of like taking inspiration for something and just like creating something completely new out of it, yeah. you know. Taking it to su- such a different place. But, uh, yeah, I guess... We're, 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 we're now like uh like two hours yeah i think i think it would be a good time to wrap it up yeah i suppose so i mean yeah this has been great uh yeah thank you so much for um for joining us and oh you know once again uh congratulations oh, yeah. on the absolutely congratulations <laughs> well deserved win and yeah we all loved the film yeah this is <laughs> i mean i'm still in shock but yeah <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for real, like when this episode has been kind of a long time coming, because uh, I've, uh, you know, I've uh, been watching your, your stuff now for you know, a good couple of years, and and I always really enjoy, um, you know, watching yeah you know, yeah your films and seeing your like entries in the playlist, and uh, it's always um, yeah I always enjoy watching them. So uh, yeah, this is great to uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it is nice to know that people are watching. I must say. <laughs> yeah but yeah thanks for coming on yeah thanks again for having me here and stumble on my words but you know <laughs> bye. bye bye